Hello, everybody. How are you doing? All right. I've just whacked my hand on the rail on the way up, so I didn't hit Robin um, for stealing all my best lines, <laughs> which he did. Um, so uh, I've been asked today to talk about uh, the UK, which is unusual. And normally in this kind of event, I would talk about the internet and the travel sector within that and, and what's going on. But I, um, I think there's some interesting things to talk about in terms of the, uh, the UK, and um, let me bring some of them to you. Um, I'm going to talk about the connected kingdom and what we're seeing in terms of what uh, the UK is going through. And it feels to me um, uh, as though we're in something as big as the Industrial Revolution. So I just wanted to get a sense from you as to where you are on that. Can I just ask everybody, how many people work in the travel sector? Can you hold your hands? Okay, that's good. How many people have got digital or online or e-commerce in their job title? About a third of people, that's interesting. How many people have got electricity in their job title? Anybody? No? How about reading? No? So I reckon we're, we're on the way to a situation where nobody's going to have digital or e-commerce in their job title. I reckon that we're on a way to uh, that kind of technology be becoming as normal as electricity in terms of how it powers, not just the way we connect to consumers in terms of marketing, but actually the way it powers um, the way business works more effectively. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce you to Nicholas. This is Nicholas with his wife and daughter. And uh, can you guess where he comes from? <laughs> Scotland. Uh, and Nicholas founded a business in 1995 called ScotWeb. And uh, can you guess what they do? They export all things Scottish, mainly tartan and uh, tweed. 17,000 different types of tartan can be purchased from ScotWeb. And 80% of their sales are outside the UK, all powered by the internet. What they do would not be possible without the internet. The most traditional of businesses, but reaching a consumer base across the entire world where they are, where they're looking for tartan um, because of online marketing and uh, the ability to distribute um, across geographies. Completely different scale of business um, from something which is a very, very traditional business. And he's a charming tra chap. He offered, I haven't taken him up on this yet, but he offered me um, to make a Google tartan. I thought that would be disgusting. So we haven't taken it up. But if you want a tartan, he can make your own tartan. And um, it's less than £1,000 for a, a bolt of customised tartan. So do, do contact him. He's a, he's a charming chap. Now, the UK um, is actually a hotbed of innovation and has been um, for many, many years. So if you think about um, the invention of the telephone, invented where? In the UK? Give a little cheer. Yeah. Well done, the UK. <laughs> telephone. Well, what about this? The invention of... Radio, well, not necessarily strictly radio, but actually the, um, uh, the understanding of electromagnetics uh, that led to uh, radio and a whole range of other technologies that we take for granted every day, invented by James Clark Maxwell in the UK. Woo! Woo! Very good. It's not that exciting, is it? Uh, television, invented where? In the UK. The internet, invented where? Tim Berners-Lee in the UK. We've invented all of these technologies. We're good at this sort of thing. And actually, in all the doom and gloom and in our self-deprecation, we sometimes don't focus on what we can do from the UK with all this innovation and um, our ability to continue to innovate uh, as a nation. The internet has 1.8 billion people on it. It's basically in English. We're good at being in English and we're quite good at selling things. There's a big, big opportunity for uh, businesses in the UK to grow from their inception, from startup to a global scale straight away. There's no need to be local uh, when you start. You can be global um, straight away. So we were wondering about this stuff, and we could see some of this stuff ourselves, um, but we didn't think that the world knew about it. When the government looked at the internet economy, they spoke, spent a lot of time looking at um, the case for investing in broadband for everybody, which is very important. High-speed broadband is important to us now as canals and railways were in the Industrial Revolution. So it's important to do that, but they kind of missed everything else which we could see going on through working with companies large and small, taking advantage, like Nicholas, of the internet economy. So we commissioned um, Boston Consulting Group um, because we wanted to try to have some independent facts to fill the void. Um, they've been focused on funding broadband. We wanted to focus on um, a range of things, including what was the size, shape, international success or otherwise, the growth potential and the drivers of the internet economy. And I'm going to share some of that with you now. So the headlines, as stolen by Robin, uh, £100 billion pounds per annum uh, contribution to GDP. Now, it's difficult to figure out this because the internet, as I kind of hinted at, is distributed across lots of different economic sectors. 
And there's people buying things online in B2B, uh, in B2C. Uh, there are people investing in technology, in access to the internet, in devices. How do you quantify all that? Well, that's why we employed the pointy-headed people at the lovely BCG to try to figure this out for us. And what they did was they were able to fairly forensically analyze the different sectors in the economy and make some assumptions about its size. 100 billion pounds per annum contribution to the GDP of the UK already. That would be 7% of GDP. If it were a sector of its own, if you pulled it all together, it would be bigger than transport, bigger than utilities, and bigger than construction. So it's big. That's the first headline. It's big. Second headline, it's user-driven. It's 60% of that 100 billion is what people as consumers are spending online. 50 billion of e-commerce spend and another 10 billion of spending on access and uh, kit to get online effectively. And that's the bit that's growing fastest. The rest of it is imports and exports and government spending and so on, but that's the bit that's growing um, fastest. So consumers are driving uh, the internet economy. It's world leading. When you look at internet spend per capita, the UK, uh, member of public in the UK will spend more buying things online than any other country in the world. It's not just about inflated prices in the UK, it's about the fact that in the UK we've got used to and trust buying things online. And it's a huge opportunity for businesses that have a strength in the UK already because they can see what some of the most advanced consumers in the world are doing and apply those lessons uh, elsewhere. It's also, as I hinted at, powered by SMEs. And this is something we didn't know. So some of the, most of this stuff we kind of knew uh, at Google, but this thing we didn't know. SMEs that are using the web a lot are growing four times faster than those that aren't. And this was based on a pretty big sample of SMEs analyzed by Boston Consulting Group. So the, the companies that are using the web a lot in their day-to-day -day business are growing faster. They're also exporting uh, more than companies that are not strong uh, web users. So um, uh, as I say, it's growing fast at the moment. Over the next four or five years, the internet economy could grow um, to 10% of GDP from 7%. If you actually... Uh, take out the last two years where a bunch of the growth trends have slowed down and say we return, and we'll ask Dennis in a bit to ask us whether we're going to return to a stronger growth profile, but if we return to a stronger growth profile, the internet economy could be actually 13% of GDP. Even though everything else is going to grow faster, I think that the internet economy could be lifted even further. So it's a huge opportunity uh, for the UK. And so I'm going to skip over some of the, the facts, but this is a breakdown of the internet economy, e-commerce, access and then the rest of it, uh, government and uh, other investment in, in GDP. Uh, this is something which I, I thought was interesting and Robin mentioned this, but basically the, nicely the graphics in PowerPoint, thank you Mr Gates, have, uh, <laughs> have hidden the numbers, but basically in the uh, total economy we export about 90 pence for, an, uh, for every pound that we import creating a deficit. Um, in the internet economy, if you look at e-commerce spending, uh, there we go, £2.80 exported for every pound imported creating a surplus. So we're good at this stuff and we're already exporting um, significantly uh, around the world. And uh, that's just the GDP, the strict measures of GDP, and I'm not an economist, but you know, there are real constraints in terms of trying to put a number around this stuff. There are other effects that are hard to, count, uh, to quantify and isolate in the same way. So there are other effects of the internet economy which we've not captured in that number. So just to draw attention to those. So first you've got the 100 billion GDP strict definition on the expenditure basis. Secondly, you've got a whole bunch of consumer and business impacts that aren't quantified within that. For example, B2B e-commerce is 360 billion pounds per annum. That's not included in here because a bunch of that is a subset of what goes into B2C e-commerce, which is only the 50 billion. So B2B e-commerce is a really big uh, part of the economy, which is not captured in that number. Another example, productivity impact. So when people use this kind of technology in their business, it saves them time, it saves them money. E-procurement is a good example of that, leading to a significant rise in productivity in sectors that really adopt it strongly. And then, of course, there are broader social impacts, just the internet bringing the world closer together, um, bringing us utility in terms of the way we choose to spend our time. Robin showed the number of hours we're spending on, um, on Facebook alone, I think, uh, but on, on that, doing things online. Um, these are all things which aren't quantified in, in that number. So it's big and it has ripples that go much beyond the sort of the GDP number. Um, and the UK leads the world in e-commerce. I'm not going to go through the detail of this, but we looked at this. This is ranking against all of the countries indexing the average to 100. The UK is way ahead in terms of e-commerce spend per capita. The BCG then combined that with um, uh, some indices around access. So how, good, how extensive is access to the internet? How fast is it? And usage of the internet and created a league table, just for fun, which is called the E-Intensity Index. And even on that, with, oh, look, I've 
bring the Netherlands for some reason. Thank you, Bill Gates. Um, the UK uh, does pretty well in terms of the global table, even though we don't have the fastest, even don't, though we don't have the highest penetration of uh, internet access. So these are kind of interesting things. Um, as you might expect, London um, has the greatest sort of concentration of all of those things when you bring together access and spend and uh, use of the internet. Um, and it's fairly well correlated, actually, with population density, this. But a lot of it is driven by access. You go to Scotland, you go to Wales, less population density, less intensive use by consumers. But business-wise, actually, businesses um, across the country, including in Scotland and Wales, are successful. Scotland, I think, is the second or third most successful region in terms of how people, how businesses are using the internet. So although consumer use is a bit more diverse, actually businesses across the country are taking advantage of uh, the internet economy. As I mentioned at the beginning, these were stunning um, statistics we came up. Businesses growing four to eight times faster when they were using the internet fully um, and exporting double the proportion of their revenues coming from exports when they were using the internet compared with those that weren't. And Another piece that was interesting, small businesses' online sales were growing faster than large businesses' online sales. So there's something about the agility and the focus on driving sales in smaller organizations that seems to allow them to be a bit more um, successful. And then there are a range of case examples. And if you want to have a look at the report, go to connectedkingdom.co.uk and you can download the whole report. Um, it's not so much big pictures and, and so on, but there is uh, quite a good um, story there, including some case studies. And he here are a few of them to sort of round us off. UK tights, traditional retail business, just like the Scott Web business, selling 23,000 varieties of tights. Ladies and gentlemen, should you wish to purchase something for your partner or yourself? Um, so, you know, again, it's like it, you couldn't possibly do that in a store. They're not a store. They're seven people working from Macclesfield, and they're um, a successful business um, in, uh, in selling tights direct to the consumer. So successful traditional business. This is a locksmith. Asaf founded a locksmith business, business focused on, uh, on London. Uh, targeting people who are in need of a locksmith, high degrees of service. So a service business going online. Um, this guy is super cool. Anybody heard of Moshi Monsters? A few people. Moshi Monsters, very popular. Anybody with a 6 to 12-year-old, uh, a third of them are on Moshi Monsters at any one time. Virtual gaming world. It's completely internet business. It wouldn't exist at all without, in, without the internet. So we've gone from traditional retail businesses, stocking more, stocking more. That's a good pun. I should have realized that earlier. <laughs> Sorry. If only I'd rehearsed. Um, damn. Uh, so traditional business with more inventory exporting much more quickly through to um, new types of business that couldn't exist at all without the internet. Another example on the B2B side is Mimecast, which is all about um, email and security uh, for businesses. So these are the kinds of examples of businesses that are taking, uh, uh, taking the internet opportunity and really, uh, and really running with it. And just to, to close, what are these guys doing? So comparing the high web using businesses with the rest of them, this is what we found. Uh, they're most extensively using online marketing, which is good news for us and good news for you because it's easy to follow that lead if you're not doing enough of it. Uh, they're also doing a lot of online orders, online payments. But you can see down the bottom as well, they're also doing more social things in terms of blogs and Twitter and social network pages and customer comments. So that's what the, the people who are growing fastest uh, are doing. It probably won't surprise most of you because most of you are already digital savvy, but there's still the rest of the digital revolution to sweep along behind us. And then finally, in terms of the growth potential, you know, we said the internet economy is 7% of GDP today. Uh, it could be 10%. It could be 13% by 2015, depending on how we all take advantage of that. So um, I wanted to say, to close, um, thank you very much to all of you for being digital pioneers and uh, leaping and learning into this space with this huge opportunity. Um, I'm really proud to be British and digital, hopefully, um, because I think that you know, we are really... Um, bringing innovation to the world, not just having invented the internet, thank you Sir Tim Berners-Lee, but also really how we use the internet in business and in our everyday lives. So I hope you find the rest of the day interesting and thank you for your time and attention. <laughs>